Oké, okay, um, maandag allemaal. Ja, ik voel magies, magievol ook hier toe. So, um, I'll only have one interactive part in my in my whole talk, and that will be at the beginning. Um, so, ja, yeah, my talk is not that short as the index. It's, it's, I will fill my 15 to 20 minutes. Um, there's a lot to say within um, each each section. So just by a show of hands, who knew that it was uh, World Environment Day on Monday? Wow, okay. I didn't know it, Ian told me, so that's why the slides in here. So, <laughs> um, so the, the whole theme of um, World Environment Day was beat plastic pollution, and I think with the, with the showcase it was emphasized again um, that COVID is passed, lockdown is passed, everyone um, go on as previously. So the focus is back on plastic um, and how to minimize it. So let's start with the negative. Um, what plastic talk can be without negative? So that's unfortunately not uh, fake pictures. That is actual pictures. Um, so it, it does happen over the world that there's plastic pollution. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, nobody likes it. So OK, let's move on to a bit more, plast uh, more positive things about plastic. So. Um, yeah, so and this this actually comes from Plastics Europe website that they they put plastic in a very positive light. So I think there's a lot of um, activism around plastic that it's a it's a negative thing. And yeah, there is there is a lot of things wrong, um, things that's not in place and mismanagement and everything. But um, all in all, we can't really go without it. So. Um, I mean, if we want to, this computer, everything that's plastic here, if you don't have that, it needs to be metal, wood, or you need to have like uh, ivory or something, um, any natural product, which is not sustainable. So, so uh, yeah, so there is a, I mean, in our industry, the most positive is it preserves our food. Um, we use it for a reason to have good quality um, produce. Okay, so just to paint a picture, so the global Plastic use, they estimate, is about 360 million tons manufactured in 2018, so that's probably a bit higher now. Um, so if you want to just paint a picture of that, if you um, go to low uh, LDPE plastic, which is our plastic liners in, in our cartons, if you fill a container with that, it, um, it's equal to about three, 4,000 rapid fields full of 40-foot containers. Um, so that's about 13 by 13 kilometers square with just 40 foot containers of plastic every year that's produced. So um, and not all of it ends up in the ocean, fortunately. So it's not that bad. But it's just to paint a picture of wh wh how we need plastic. Okay, so, um, so what's the fuss about? Um, as is shown in the pictures, there's a lot of pollution. So uh, they estimate about 8 million tons of plastic go into the oceans from coastal countries uh, every year. Um, and that's mainly single-use plastic. So that's your styrofoam, that's your stroikies that you drink your um, cool drink with. And, yeah, so, um, and that's bad for the environment. We, um, I mean, there's, there's a, lo a lot of things they list, and one of them is, for instance, uh, uh, the environment can't adapt to climate change um, because of plastic. The plastic um, ends up in the ocean, um, like the sea turtles and the sea perkies and everything. It ends up in your stomachs. So it's, it's not good, and I mean, let's face it, nobody likes to sit on the beach and there's a, a bunch of plastic lying around. So, um, so it's not good, it doesn't look good, um, it doesn't need to be in nature. Okay, so, um, so the plastic, pla SA Plastic Pact was in um, 2020, it was um, introduced in South Africa. So there's a lot of stakeholders involved there. So it's all the way from government down, um, it's recycling plants, it's plastic manufacturing people, uh, key people that's, that's involved with it. And the end goal um, is to have a circular economy. So I always thought, what, what does that mean? And in plain simple terms, it just means recycling. So no, nothing goes to waste. Um, so they've got different targets that they, they aim for. I'm not going to go through that. Um, so, but 2025 is around the corner. So if by that time um, we need to have everything recyclable, um, so no wastage. Okay, so, but I mean, yeah, so as I said, in our food industry, or plastic is used all for a good reason. If you think plastic liners, wrappers, polytrays, 
Um, panas, everything is for is to retain quality, moisture loss, temperature control. Um, we can't really go without it. As Anna said, um, after this season with the shrivel issues, especially on stone fruit, I mean, that's your best option is plastic. So, okay. So let me move on to a bit more science because that's what we try to do at Experico. So <laughs> we've been we've been involved with a couple of trials over the last. I think the first first one, which wasn't really focused on plastic, it was uh, more on energy savings from about 2016. I was involved with this. Um, so, but if you if you take a step back and you look overall with the plastic, um, so w what would the objectives be? Um, so the first one is, well, you want to reduce plastic. That's very obvious. Um, so one way is you go thinner liners. So if you go from a 60 micron to a 37 and a half, you, you're almost halfway there on like reducing your plastic footprint. So if you go from a 37 micron to a 20 micron, um, again, you're almost halving your, half your plastic usage. So um, uh, other ways you use punch liners. Um, so that is, I'll show you some, some data on the punch liners. Um, so even though it's a small bit, everything contributes to less plastic. Okay, so the other way is you go without it, so no liners at all. You just pack it in a carton and there it goes. You hope for the best. So, and then there's alternatives to plastic, so then coatings. Um, I think coatings has been a discussion point for some, for some time. Um, there was work done many years ago on, on bioplastics, and, um, but uh, our industry, we had to decide between recyclable or biodegradable, biocompostable, biobags, whatever you want to call it. Um, and it was decided, well, it's, uh, recyclable is, is a better option. So the, um, when you go to Europe, there's not really plants that can process bio bio bags so you, because you need a plant it's not something you put on your compost heap and the soil organisms and the earthworms they will eat it up it doesn't work like that so okay so so the first project um that um that i want to show you is um Ilian presented it on on tuesday at the showcase so it was on liner thickness so as I said, with liner thickness, you can actually reduce the amount of plastic. Um, and anyway, but sometimes one just need to quantify what's the effect on your fruit quality. So um, that was what this objective was for the trial. Um, we worked on forel pears. It was post CI, so we got it in about August. Um, um, we got the fruit, and then we packed them in the different liners. So it was a no-liner, 20 micron. Um, LDPE, a 15 micron HDPE, so more like your grape type of pack, and then your 37 and a half micron LDPE. So they all had perforations in. Okay, so um, so we started with some good fruit. They had uh, for for real a 5.8 kilogram, and they still had a, had a good color. Um, the the firmness, we there was differences, but it wasn't really something that we could explain. Um, but yeah, so. And the color, there wasn't any differences. But if you if you look at the um, at the mass loss, there was you can see the effect of plastic. I mean, if there's no uh, with the no liner, um, there was that 1.9 percent. There's definitely more moisture loss compared to the to the liners, and there wasn't any difference between the liners. So, so I mean, if you use a 15 or 37 and a half, um, it um, that doesn't matter when it comes to moisture loss. What we haven't looked at and is uh, temperature control. So if, um, I mean, we've got a very, when you do research, you sometimes have a very perfect cold chain, but that doesn't necessarily simulate what's, what's happening when you send a pallet of fruit or a container of fruit up in Africa or, or to the Far East. Okay, so the, the next um, project was a uh, no liner and a punch liner. Um, so that's actually a trial, I see Davi Mullig is here, that's a trial that he, sub, that he actually applied for at Hortgram many years ago, which I, I had the privilege of doing. Um, so and it, uh, yeah, so, so the, the initial focus of the trial was on energy saving. So if you've got punch liners, your force air cooling cycle is quicker. Um, I think that might be applicable now with all our ESCOM woes. Um, but can we save energy in such a way? And then also, um, with punch science, can we maintain the quality? So that was the main objective with, with the straw. So 
Um, and then you might ask, well, punch liners, why don't you just go with outliners? Well, we know a lot of fruit types, um, stone fruit, golden scalas, we know they need, they need a bag. Um, they can't go without a liner. Okay, so that was also post CA fruit. Um, we, the whole project ran over about five seasons, and we've done 15 repetitions of the trial. Um, and that was with Grain Smith, Pribens, Fuji, Golden Delicious, Top Red, Crips Pink. Um, that we worked on. The, so it was a non-perforated liner, so it's just a normal um, 37 micron bag, then a no liner, so no bag at all, just a carton, and then we had the two millimeter punches and the five millimeter punches. So those fruit were packed on pallets, and it was subjected to an, a force air cooling cycle until it reached the desired um, pulp temperature, and then we then we store it for the shipping period, which was um, five weeks for best case scenario, nine weeks in that time for worst case scenario. I think in today's terms, nine weeks is, might be the best case scenario. So, um, okay, so what was the key results? Um, is that last perforations, we had almost a 40% reduction in force, force air cooling time. Um, the small perforations, there was a bit of a um, mixed results, and I think it is, has to do with fruit that uh, easily blocks uh, a small um, punch hole. Okay, so in terms of quality, uh, with the Granny Smith, Pribin, Fuji, Top Red, and Crips Pink, we haven't seen any quality differences between the different treatments. Um, and then with your Golden Delicious, we saw actually lentil cell damage, which was strongly linked to the treatment. So. Um, the fruit that had the liner, uh, they didn't uh, show a lot less lenticel. So this was particularly, uh, I think, an uh, orchard that was just, there was something mm, that just predisposed, or if something made that the risk was that orchard specifically, um, that the lenticel risk was so, so high. Um, but uh, yeah, so the no liner showed the least lenticel and the, the punch liners and the no no liner treatment showed a lot of lentil cell damage. And then in another the um, <coughs> run that we did with, with uh, Golden Delicious, we also saw that when you had a, a plastic liner, that the green color was better retained. So and that just confirms why we need, why we need it for Golden Delicious. Okay. So just to one last comment on this is that, um, so we've, we found the results, but sometimes one needs to go to semi-commercial level before you just change the whole way you do things at your pack house. Because um, we've got a 48-hour force air cooling cycle, then we're there. And I know that's not the reality out there. It takes sometimes a bit longer. Okay, so the next one is, is um, edible coating. So that's a trial um, that was started last year. So the report writing and all the data crunching is, is still happening in the background. Um, but it, we also sourced the post CA fruit. It was Fuji, Golden's, Packhams. Um, there was plastic liner, um, was, can, or no plastic liner, that was a negative control, if you put it that way. And then there was a, a plastic liner, which was your positive control. And then we had five different coatings. Um, so I can unfortunately not disclose um, what it was. So, um, but it's just, it was different products, different suppliers. Um, Okay, so I don't have a lot to show at the moment. So it's, one has to note that this fruit was pushed quite to the extreme. So the, the shipping period, um, because the edible coating you apply at packing, so that shipping period afterwards was quite long. Um, so shrivel, which would obviously with your packums and golden delicious, it, it might be a major issue. Your, your liners still performed very well. And in some cases, your coatings that uh, um, that reduce your shrivel incidence. Um, and then with your lenticel spot, why, why I show this is because sometimes with the chemical, and we've seen it with, I mean, even pre-harvest applications that can cause lenticel damage. So I think it might be a good indicator of your, of your coating's um, risk to cause damage to your fruit. Um, we did see some lenticel damage, but the, the results wasn't necessarily a, a trend that we see that one coating causes a lot of havoc and the others don't. So, um, yeah, and it could also have been due to just randomly that fruit um, that, that had uh, um, 
of one carton that might have had just been predisposed or might have a higher risk to, to lentil cell damage. Okay, so, um, so yeah, as I said, it was tested under extreme conditions, um, so long-term storage. Um, there was some potential to reduce shrivel, and um, it will definitely, I believe there is definitely potential to add value to uh, lower risk cultivars. And yeah, we'll repeat another season of this of this trial. Okay, so just some what I want to show you is um, my first exposure to fruit coatings was actually many years ago, um, and I, what I want to show you with that is why I was I was excited when I saw saw the results. So this was Packham's Triumph base. So we had a 37 micron um, liner, the normal liner, uh, two coatings and no liner as a comparison. And that was after the eight weeks shipping period. So we applied the coating, it was packed um, and went into cold room, in the cold room for eight weeks. So, and then on shelf life. So that's why we've got such a low, low firmness. So there was no one MCP or anything, <laughs> other applications post all. So there was a significant retention with your flesh firmness, significant retention of, of your um, green color um, and a significant reduction in shrivel. So, there is definitely um, major potential in coatings, I believe. Okay, so now my, the question is what's happening out there? So move away from research and let's look at what's happening out uh, in, the, in the world. So I think most of us are aware of the UK tax law um, on plastic. So if your packaging material is, has, doesn't have more than 30% recyclable material in it, you pay a, pay a tax uh, on that. Um, then there's uh, EU, they've banned single-use plastics, so any food containers. Um, then Africa, they, on paper, let's put it that way, there's a lot of restrictions in place um, across uh, more than 30 countries in Africa that's got something in place, even South Africa, can you believe it? Okay, so, but, but. Um, some markets still insist or still need plastic. So um, if you think about poor cold chain management, um, plastic is still some sort of buffer. Even if you have a coating, there's still some kind of buffer for temperature. Um, African Far East market, all the warm countries where there's, there's uh, we think outside Europe and UK where there's, everything is perfect, if I put it that in brackets. Um, Russia has got conventional shipments, so they don't have reefer containers. Our food goes with reefer ships, so it goes into the stomach of the ship, um, individual pallets. Some markets insist on polytrays. My question is why? This doesn't contribute to, um, to maintenance of good quality food. Um, and then there's other issues that push us toward plastic. I said about ESCOM. Um, if we, um, if the ESCOM uh, if there's less, less time to cool your fruit or force air cool your fruit, then punch liners might be an option. Um, but then also harbor logistics. Um, if you've got punch liners or no liners um, and your fruit stands on the, on the harbor for two or three weeks, um, I would rather have plastic than around my fruit. Um, so it's not that our current situation in South Africa really helps us um, in removing plastic. Okay, so conclusion. Um, we have to face the facts and that the world wants, they want less plastic. So um, I put the world in brackets because sometimes it's just the activism thing um, and it's uneducated decisions or comments that's made. Um, so, but in real term, what that means is we need less pollution and less wastes. Um, so they want a circular economy, and that means recycle um, and no pollution. Okay, so I believe coatings and punch and thinner liners are options um, that should be tested at least at the semi-commercial level. Um, and then the final thing is that market perception needs to be changed. So it doesn't, uh, bother, someone in Malaysia might not bother and that coating is the next best thing. He just wants plastic because his perception is it needs to be in plastic. Um, so there's going to be a lot of, there needs to be a lot of change in, into that. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Thank you.